Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 177 for the week of September 29th, 2014. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who is here with me this week? Barack Zegger. Omar. Toby. Oh, that's everyone. Uh, Charlie's out sick. Bryce, I hopefully should be here next week. Is he? He's yeah. at Oracle World. He's going to give us a, uh, a pick for uh, our book club, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So what's everyone up to? Just hanging Doing out, man. Good? I gave blood today. Oh, look at you. I know. Are you supposed to give blood when you're sick? Yeah. They, they, they asked me the questions. <laughs> I was like, do you feel good? I'm like, I feel fine. Okay. They're like, okay. But I, apparently they really like my blood type. I'm A negative. So. Oh, is that rare? It's... One of the rarest, but it's also the most versatile, so I can give it to more they can, people. More people can use it. Mosquitoes also don't bite you, huh? I don't know. I think that's so you don't get bit by mosquitoes. So yes, you probably. Do, yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I did the platelets. So. Oh, okay. No spider will bite you and give you supernatural powers. Damn it! I'm, oh, there goes my aspiration of being Peter Parker. We got a couple news things to talk about. Um, ton of ton of movie and TV stuff to talk about here. Actually, all TV. So after what an entire month of nothing, we have yeah. an episode where there's a ton of, of course, shit. of course, that's what happens. Uh, this past weekend, I was down in Long Beach for the uh, DC retailer meeting in the Long Beach Comic Con. Sweet DC retailer meeting. I've done a few of these before in the past. Uh, this time is probably the. The least impressive of the three. The other two were at, one was at Warner Brothers, one was at the DC uh, Entertainment offices. This was just at a hall in the convention center, but it's cool. Uh, Jim Lee was there. A bunch of the other heads of DC's like marketing and retail guys were so there. So they, they connected it with the con. The DC was not at the convention. Oh, okay. They just used the convention center because they knew people were going to be in town. So, oh, okay. um, but yeah, still cool to talk about. You know, they they previewed some upcoming stuff. I saw ten or twelve pages from Pax Americana, the upcoming Frank Quietly uh, multiversity issue. Oh, so good. Is there a, is there a penis or a penis in any of those you saw? I did not see a penis in okay, it. No. Um, he only know, sees penis at Disneyland. Not, well, dude, frankly, he didn't see a penis in the page he bought either. So, well, this is true. That is true. That's true. Uh, not too much, uh, you know. No, t- no pictures allowed, unfortunately. Um, not too much to talk about in the pages. Just awesome, awesome art. Uh, I saw like the full first issue of World's End number one, which just looks really awesome. Ton of preview pages for like Deathstroke and uh, Gotham by Midnight and Batgirl and a bunch of other upcoming DC titles. So everything looks really good. So it's but man, that Pax Americana. Oh, it's Frank Quietly. I've been waiting for that thing forever. And the first page is totally the first page of Watchmen, just kind of redone. It, 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 the cover is like the cover of Watchmen. It's a panel in the comic. It's oh, it's, I'm so excited for it. Cool. Uh, it's but, so nice to hear you excited about comics. I know. I know. <laughs> Usually, I hear you like just like being all brooding, like God, for I comics. Got, I hate comic cons. You, you get Ryan out of the store for one. Yeah, time, yeah. And he's right? like, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, it's stuff that's, you know... Um, I saw the sun. I'm energized. <laughs> well, it's gone for like five days. It's stuff that I don't... You know, it's stuff that's kind of preview and teaser and stuff. So stuff that ha- people haven't seen. So it's neat. Yeah, I was blown away. I came in Wednesday and like there was like 30 people in the store. I was like, never... No one's ever here on Wednesdays. But... What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wednesday, our slowest day of the week. Exactly. Yeah. For some reason. So you mean 30 people were actually hanging out instead of just coming in, buying, and leaving? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. They're like, oh, shit, Ryan's not here. Let's party. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it tends to be the opposite. But um, the one cool thing that they talked about, you know, they, they, there was a bunch of stuff uh, uh, talked about at the con, but one of the things I thought was a little more interesting was that there was a lot of talk of um, more all-ages books, more kid-friendly books, a lot of retailers asking about it, and DC's reply was, you know, we've tried, and when we do, they don't sell. There was a couple things brought up that I thought were actually really interesting ideas. Uh, One of them was another retailer suggested taking art from things like Hush or like a Tony Daniel Batman book or something and just repurposing the art for all-ages stories. It doesn't have to be a monthly title. It doesn't have to be any sort of continuity between them. Just sing- f- random single-issue volumes of new stories using that art. You know, you, 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 you hide away any you know, super gore. sexy Catwoman yeah. panels or anything like that. But you just use them, you know, these real iconic you know, and, and really well-drawn comics. But with a – not a kid – not like a kid's book mentality. Not like Art Balthazar. Kind of all right. ages. <laughs> But, but just an all-ages yeah. style of writing and, and just a Batman adventure. And I was like, 
that's actually a really good idea. I mean, you see that in the like the board books and the kids books. Well, they will take art and stuff from the animated series and kind of yeah. put them into a story. But actually, I hadn't considered really taking the, the more quote unquote adult art from some of these titles and and repurposing them for uh, just a general like you know just you can have two issues come out a year. It doesn't matter. Just something to give younger kids or, or kind of more casual fans that isn't. So full of continuity and well, full I mean, of the, the stories. The, the, it's the association. Because, I mean, like, when the X-Men video arcade game came out, that thing was plastered with Jim Lee art from X-Men. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, I think it's a good idea. I mean, the flip side of that is get somebody who's a really good artist to draw <laughs> kids' books. <laughs> but they don't sell, right? Yeah. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. So repurposing art, I thought that was actually a really good idea. I wonder if DC will go with that. They also said that they've actually taken numerous ideas from their various retailer meetings and uh, and, and and various have been implemented into actual uh, things, one of them being the current Harley Quinn book. Now, I can't prove this, but I had a conversation with DC at this last retailer meeting about a kind of like a, which would have been a little over a year ago, about a sort of Deadpool ish take on harley quinn obviously deadpool now is that the first or second one maybe it was the first one uh being a you know a very kind of deadpoolish take on on harley obviously deadpool comics still very very popular and harley is as close as dc has to like their version of deadpool and why is there not an ongoing harley quinn comic especially given the success of deadpool and then what do we have a very deadpoolish take on harley quinn I can't say that was me. Clearly, this is not an not a not an uncommon thought, but maybe who knows? That'd be really super awesome if. if well, it, it's one of those things where, like Deadpool, people like slightly st- people go to the implemented character, that idea. Well, people go to the character because of the kind of the mystique of the character, but also from the comedy aspect of that type of book. Well, yeah, I mean, Harley is different. It's a different take on superheroes, where you know Harley fits very well in that, where the book can be. You know, she's, you know, obviously iconic because people love the merchandise from her. Sure. Um, but it's also, you know, that character blends very, very well with kind of having this, you know, book that can be more comedic and not necessarily needs to be serious or take in, you know, continuity issues. And, I mean, her the, the one shot from San Diego this year was just completely and utterly ridiculous, centered around her, you know, at down at, you know, SDC. So mm-hmm. it's like... Yeah, I, I mean, I can, I can definitely see that. I don't. Why would they give you credit, though? Well, n- no, I'm not saying give me credit. I'm saying they said there have been numerous things from the retailer meetings that they have gone and implemented. Uh, last year, one of the biggest requests from the retailers was trade paperbacks of the Batman, the uh, Batman Adventures, the Batman animated series mm-hmm. comics, and lo and behold, they're finally getting them. So clearly, that was something when they pulled the room. Ninety five percent of the retailers raised their hand. Uh, another thing they talked about was Chuck Ticks and Birds of Prey. It could be it's it's coming. They have the Nightwing one coming. They have to, Birds of Prey has to be coming. But with uh, uh, with um, the reboots, like why some books get rebooted and why some books mm-hmm. don't, they said you know it's just kind of on a case by case basis. Like with Suicide Squad getting rebooted and Superman not when Jeff Johns took over, they said that they it, it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's really case by case. And again, when they pulled the room, two or three people raised their hand when they said they want the reboots, and ninety five percent said no. We n- under just don't even renumber them under any circumstance. Right. It's not worth it. Just you could have your variants, you can have your incentives, you could do whatever you want, but it's not going to change stuff. Like no one's going to order drastically different based on a number one. You know, I mean, if there's variants, if there's incentives, that's that's all we need. We don't need that number one. So there's some cool info. Uh, but I, I thought one of the, mo- the – probably the most interesting thing they said there was that they didn't say Miss Marvel and Hawkeye as specific examples. Some retailers did, but DC said that they are trying to expand their audience on some of their titles. So things like Batgirl, Gotham Academy, uh, Gotham by Midnight, uh, s- some new takes on some of these other titles. They're trying to – shy a little bit away from continuity big crossovers every book having to connect to the same universe much the way marvel has done with you know she hulk and kind of like rocket raccoon and uh you know definitely hawkeye and and miss marvel being these very self-contained 
books that have huge fan bases mm-hmm. for just that one title. Yeah. So it's it's Thor, good to see DC. Thor's been that way and Spider-Man's been that way. I mean, they've had well, little bits here and there, but for the most Spider-Man's part. Spider-Man's parts of huge crossover stuff. I mean, Well, no, no, I'm saying up. like Spider-Man itself. Like it, it, the book itself has been outside of Marvel continuity with like the big stuff. It has a tie I don't say then, Spidey but. has. But Thor, maybe a little bit, but they're still using these characters in a lot of different titles. But you know, a lot of these guys are are are, are kind of staying you know by themselves. And and obviously, a few of these books come out this week, so I'll be curious to see how they do. I mean, I think it's just good that they have a change of pace on some of those stories yeah, because absolutely. Batwoman was honestly a book that I thought I was going to be jumping off of, and it's refreshing because. She's within continuity. She has a lot more characters than just her, you know, LGBT, you know, char- uh, girlfriend and like werewolves and, you know, all these other monsters. Like, you know, she has other people cruising through, you know, sometimes you see Nightwing or Batgirl, people within the Bat family, uh, Bruce Wayne saying, oh, hey, cuz, you know, like that kind of stuff is, has been cool and refreshing. And it, I think it's allowed for growth of the character. Um, without a doubt, it's not the same without you know J.H. Williams. We miss him dearly. We miss you, buddy. Did you come did back? You read the Future's End story? I have not yet. Um, it actually, with what has gone on with Batwoman since before the New Fifty Two, and with what's going on, been going on since, like it's kind of it, like I liked how it kind of tied in with something that's different from Gotham, in the sense of like the what's that book that's coming out? That's all like the magic stuff, isn't there like? A magic-based Gotham book coming out. Gotham by Midnight? Gotham by Midnight. Or so Gotham After Midnight? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, it's... The book kind of takes that sort of... It's kind of like the... It's the Justice League dark of the Batman universe. Hmm. Cool. Like, that's kind of... And she's always kind of been there, like, with, you know, Alice and... Yeah, yeah, totally. The werewolves. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she's always like, been about, like, dark, brooding monsters, and that's why I think yeah. that Wonder Woman team-up was so perfect with her. Yeah. So, with, uh, you know, all the different Greek monsters and whatever, so... Um, but I don't know necessarily if, I mean, cause I, man, I'm, I'm such a big fan of Batgirl and I, I love, I've loved the Simone run. I love Simone when she's partnered with the right artists. Like whenever she was with Fernando Passerin, he's just incredible. Uh, I loved what he did when he was also with, uh, working on, working with Tomasi, um, on, I forget which, was it a Green Lantern book? I think it was Green Lantern Corps. Was it Green Lantern Corps? Anyways. Yeah, it's just a bummer sometimes when it changes completely, like how Batgirl's going to be a lot more kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm a teeny bopper. Oh, yeah, I'm a CW Batgirl. It's, well, it's, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about that. They, like they have they have more Bat Universe characters. Like, why don't they fucking make spoiler that character? Man. You know, why does it got to be fucking Barbara? Because I think it does. And I, I'm sure this is why Toby's not talking right now. <sighs> Oracle is I'm so not. Oracle is so fucking profound as a character, and the more you you bring back, uh, you know, Barbara Gordon as kind of like this inexperienced like player, and she's gonna take selfies and shit. It just really diminishes well, her quick, legacy. Real quick, so I love Cameron Stewart. I think he's a great artist. Right? No, I love um, him too. Babs, he's are, awesome. This, she's a new artist. She's the first comic book she's ever drawing is Batgirl. She's incredible. Like okay. I love the art style. Right. DC put out the first 10 pages of the first half of issue number one online. I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it. Would you have liked it it with Stephanie? No. It reads like Hawkeye, and it it just feels way too hipster, gimmicky. gimmicky. It just feels too... The stories... It's Bat Umbler. It's just kind of bouncing around. It it just feels... Isn't... (sighs) I mean, maybe be slightly better for his if it was Stephanie, if it was spoiler, but it just doesn't. Feel... I mean, it just makes more sense. I mean, I don't. I I just think they're going backwards. But it, it just it felt like we're trying to emulate a style in one of these other books that I already hate. So it's not winning any favors with me. And again, I I read you, you the first like Batgirl. No, I've loved no. Batgirl. I, I hate Hawkeye. Talking, yeah. talking about Hawkeye. I, I've okay. tried. I read the first ten pages. and I was like, this is not Batgirl at all. Like, it, this isn't the character, well, this isn't the style. It's such a severe, like, tone change throughout the entire book. I mean, we had, I mean, Simone's run was very dark. I mean, very, I yeah. mean, and the art was amazing on it. I don't mind you know, if they was, lighten the, the book up, but this is just not, it's, but no, it's, it's not the character, and, and the writing feels just so... Well, just from what they previewed, not, it looks like a complete tone shift in that, you know... 
Like well, it's 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 like yes, she's taking selfies now and doing. If, and if you doing had told me Kelly Sue DeConnick wrote it, I would have been like, yeah, sounds about right. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's as unreadable as what she does. It's if if which, no surprise because Hawkeye is my fraction. It, it, it feels just like a bunch of gibberish and not anything I'm interested in. I'll yeah. read the first few, but. Uh, you know, it just feels like such a such a shift. It's it's such a it's such a bummer when yeah. sometimes stylistically you get a book that has kind of like the right players in piece and uh, the right players in yeah. place. Like I mean, Fraction, Aja. Like yeah. you would think, like this that is like should be fucking, fucking incredible, killer. right? And uh, I love both of them on different books. Yeah. But yeah, for me, I mean, I have friends that really enjoy Hawkeye. But again, these friends are of that type of you know, well, readership where it, this it's is a per- not something that I would say – I'm not going to say it's not lasting, but again, this is purely stylistic. Yeah. And it's not something that is – like it's good for a cover like that Uncanny X-Men Original Sin Evolution. We don't need the whole book to look like that. Yeah. No, I mean I like having stuff that's like kind of random covers like that that's kind of more – the cover's an art. It's, it, we're, we're treating it as kind of this – you know – kind of stylized yeah, piece, but, in, yeah. Yeah. but inside you know it's like it's the art it, that fits the book it's the writing that fits the book all that so stuff. I, I don't doubt i mean i bump my numbers way up on batgirl i don't doubt it'll be a sales a sales success for a while i don't doubt it'll hit the audience it wants a hit it's just no when, when this was announced too i you know was you know bagging on it but i legitimately wanted to like it i read the first 10 pages and i will read the issue and i'll continue to buy it for a while and i i hope it changes i hope maybe i can become accustomed to it but i've read enough books like this that i just it does not interest me and, and so you know do i go in with a bit of a you know kind of colored opinion already well maybe but i really try not to i really try to take these books for what they were uh, or what they are, and and just and, and enjoy it. And those first ten pages did not work for me. But you know, give them a couple issues, see what happens. But this is actually a great switch to talk about the Long Beach Comic Convention, uh-huh. which I went to uh, this past weekend as well, which is the same place they held um, this DC retailer meeting. And the reason I wanted to bring this up and why I thought it was a good switch is because, much like Batgirl. Uh, the Long Beach Comic Convention, this is nothing about the con itself. This is not specific to this con. This has just been a growing thing within myself. It's just, I'm I'm finding it every time I go, I'm really excited to go to a comic convention and I get there and I realize I I used to be excited to go to comic conventions. I am no longer excited to go to comic conventions. And I'm finally like, by the time I left, I I was like, You're finally a grumpy old man. Oh, I've been a grumpy old man forever. But, uh, they're like Batgirl, it's just not for me anymore. And that's perfectly fine. The place was packed. There were a ton of people buying stuff. People seemed to like it. You know, these are not traditional comic fans, which is cool. The audience, you know, the industry needs all the blood it can get. But they were there for, you know, people are there for their weird artist alley shit. They're there for their uh, their pop vinyls. They're there to Get hang out with stormtroopers. There was like not even any t-shirt vendors. There, there. was no t-shirt vendor. Ver- not not like a t-shirt vendor. No. Oh jeez. Um, I mean, it's bigger than Big Wow. I mean, they probably got you know fifty five thousand people over the weekend, probably or something like that. Maybe more. I don't know how many people they got. So it wasn't a huge, huge convention, but uh-huh. you know, it's it's a lot of just casual stuff. And, and part of it is the store. Part of it is I've been doing this for so long I, I don't need to go to comic conventions anymore i'm not really looking for anything anything i can get there i can get cheaper myself um uh, it's cool to see the creators there I, I i rarely bring anything or wait in line for them uh <clears throat> yeah i just i don't know i just whenever i go i always feel just like why did i even bother that's why thankfully we have things like image expo that you need to go off to go more go to more often like you know just I go need to go period you, well i mean you just need to go to those shows that you know we talked about earlier that provide something different from just a con experience something that provides kind of like it's very similar to like i think uh like your retailer um meeting because i think that in some ways when you explain the retailer meetings to us and you have a big group of people you have people talking they show pictures they talk about their stories they're almost selling their first pitch but to a whole audience, that's really what I think Image Expo is. So, I mean, good thing that there's more of that 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 that's out there. Too bad there's not a little bit more out there, like maybe putting having Dark Horse do it, um, or you know some other kind of like. I mean, I know we had what is the Indie Press Expo, but sadly we small lost. Part. Yeah, small well, press expo. Ape, uh, ape up in San Francisco. But yeah, that's next weekend. 
Oh, well, it is next. Oh, I think it's next weekend. But it turned into like it's all like Fandom Artist Alley style stuff now. Yeah, a lot and, of a lot of art students from Academy Art. And yeah, stuff like that. yeah. They get a lot of. Oh, even teachers are there. <laughs> they get a lot of bigger indie guys still, but it's kind of not stuff I'm you into. You don't get Jeff Smith anymore. You don't get the, uh, the Terry Moore. They you know, do. Like, they actually do get some pretty good, pretty not big recently. guests. Recently. But again, it's mostly stuff I'm not into, and the Long Beach Comic Con too. Again, huge artist alley, huge group, huge. I mean, twice as big as any as the rest of the whole thing combined. But it's you know nothing against any of the people there. They they're doing their thing, and I'm you know awesome that they're doing it, and they obviously have a crowd, and people are buying stuff. But uh, just not for me. But I don't know what I'm looking for because when they go to something like uh, you know uh, uh, a Comic Con or or uh, you know, um, you know WonderCon. The Marvel and DC panels are really a bunch of people saying nothing, right? Mm. I don't generally stand in line for six hours for an autograph or do the big toy hunt stuff like Toby does. You know, I mean, I don't know what I want from a con. Have you watched I, I welcome you back to Comic Con, and we could do the uh, Ninja Warrior well, thing. I, we could go a laser tagging on top of uh, a, peto, a Petco Park. And I think... Run away from some zombies, and we'll do ziplining on a coffin. Well, I think I may kind of want that. I kind of... I think I'm kind of over the small nature of the comic convention. I almost... People hate them, but I almost want to go to like the creation cons yeah. and spend two hundred dollars to get an autograph from William Shatner in a picture. Like to me, that feels different because I've done the comic convention mm. just for so long. Again, I, I've said it so many times. I feel like I'm totally like I should be paid for all this free advertisement <laughs> for Nerd HQ. But it sounds to me like that's what you need to do. The next time you go to Comic Con, don't even get a fucking don't even go get a ticket. I mean, you can easily, obviously, walk the floor, right? Leave, go outside, hang out with Toby, go to some cool little events, and then you know what? Go to like two panels, pay fifty bucks or pay sixty bucks, whatever they charge, like twenty five to thirty dollars per per panel. There's only like thirty people, fifty people in the room, but all the bomb ass like presenters. But it's done in a way where it's more like. It's, a, it's an actual organic conversation. It's not like they're just up there selling. It's not like they care about being on TV. It's not like it's edited. Like, people are fucking have a good time. They're dropping Freaking F-bombs singing. and S- yeah. It was like Amy Pond and Rory were singing last, last time I was there. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so it's totally, like, unscripted and just, like, fun shit and cool. just celebrating the culture of... You know it, it, what's happening. It's there. like an image expo. I mean, we we get that big push of like these are the books that are coming out. So like, there's kind of this excitement and this this buzz about it. But then the creators are just kind of there to <coughs> have a conversation. There's no people are kind of just cool. We just saw something neat, but we want to talk to those creators and and in just a casual environment. And you know that's that's what I enjoyed when I went down to Image Expo because yeah. you like you said it's like like a more personal experience sure. versus going to you know the DC panel or the Marvel panel and they're like yeah so this is this and this and this but we can't talk about this and, and the, there's like there's no there's no conversation because they're not saying anything yeah and like I mean it's totally fucking bullshit but like Eric Stevenson standing in line like he's like the third person in line for the retail line. I know it's bullshit because he can obviously have whatever the fuck he wants, but him being in line with people and that some people don't even know who he is, but then when they find out, they're like, oh shit, oh, could you just sign this or whatever? Like, the, you know, just like being in the, the intimacy, like you said. Mm. I think that's cool. And well, that's what I think is, has, has gone away from the shows. The thing is, is they, you know, the image has stuff there that you're not necessarily going to see in a store because shops can't necessarily stock that huge, thick hardcover or. You know, they got a nice special edition for whatever because the, that's the nice thing to get. You know, is that those? It's not. It's a con exclusive. Eventually, you could just sure. get it easy. But sure. it's like, holy crap! There's yeah, it's image. Know. Image can sell whatever the fuck they want, regardless of being a con exclusive. And they sold it there. They sold it to one of my buddies, and this guy's like, oh shit, I don't know if I have enough to cover rent. And it was funny as fuck. But yeah. he's like, fuck this, I would pay double if I was at a con. I picked like, up a Survivor shirt. Just I like that's cool. I like yeah. it. I, you know, but it's like they. It, it felt more personal. It felt more like kind of targeted. It's their brand. They're targeting to you, but you know, it's it's not like you're wandering a con floor and everybody has the same shit. Yeah. And it's like, oh, look, this con exclusive somebody waited in line for and is now you know fifty dollars over the price that you well, could buy it normally. Part of it is is that I'm just sort of I've got everything I want. Grumpy I think at this man. point, no, nah, not that. It's just I just oh, you know I don't need to go digging their back issues anymore. I don't 
Mm. There's not, I don't look for toys. I'm well, just, I'm actually, well, you said I'm still toy. I mean, this year I actually really didn't care. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got my He Man and that was kind of it, right? I was like, I got the mandatory He Man done. And I was <laughs> like, after that, I was going to have a good time. Yeah. I mean, it was just lit. I mean, you know, there's still a lot of, I had other friends still hunting down the pop figures, but even though I would have liked them, I was like, I, I was like, I looked at the line. I'm like, dude, I got better things to do. Yeah. I was like, I'll, I'll go have fun. And, you know, and there's other things to do. But in line, switching gears here a little bit, um, uh, last week, you know, there's there's this thing that came out. There, creators talking about is it even worth to be in these conventions? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's uh, these cr- f- creators are going to these conventions. And they're losing money. I mean, they're they're getting the table. They're getting charged for quite a bit of money. There's there's people that walking by, no idea that these people are the ones that created some of these characters. That you know, the full excellent runs of these characters. And you know, and they're they're questioning at this point if they even want to stay at these conventions anymore. I mean, there's well, that- there you know, there's the Campbells. There's you know, there's you know the guys are making bank left over, right? You know they get their lines of people and they get their flippers and whatever, right? But we're talking about some of the you know the guys from like you know that that been there and and they don't get any traction anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know I definitely noticed when I was there the at Long Beach and this is everywhere. The attention is on the cosplayers. Mm-hmm. The attention is on whatever kind of media thing is there, mm-hmm. um, which stared a little bit. The attention is on. You know, it's it's. I don't. Know, the attention's gone. The attention's gone from what the, these things were originally built for. Mm. You know, uh, kind of the the takeaway on this on this article. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember the. So it's the wife of a of a pretty famous comic artist, and I'm totally blanking as to who it is now. Uh, she was writing. You know, the kind of the cosplayers are sort of ruining the comic cons. I don't want to say I totally agree or disagree. I think it's just it's a building on it. But some things are kind of getting lost in the shuffle. I agree. And yeah. I think cosplaying is cool. I think the people that do it are super talented. Well, I also don't think cosplay is to blame for it. I think there's a lot. I mean, there's the flippers are there to to make money, right? There, right. there's mm-hmm. you know, there's there's the people and there's the, there's the you know the 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 guys that are loaded with money that go for the. <laughs> The, the the commissions where other people can't afford them, they just go, well, here's a couple grand, you know, yeah. screw this line. And, uh, you know, I, they have the money. I mean, I don't, don't talked, hate them on it, but, you know. Well, we talked about this around the time of Comic-Con because um, uh, uh, Mile High Comics said they were pulling out of yeah. Comic-Con and they, they reversed into their art now. But yeah. their reason for wanting to pull out of Comic-Con was because they had five booths and didn't sell enough comics. So it's like, well, you're not going to sell enough comic books at mm-hmm. Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the comic conventions are like that now. You're just not going to sell the comic books. You know, you well, a lot of, and a few, I mean, the, the, the industry has shifted. I mean, yeah. how many people are buying trades now over trying to collect the old back issues, right? Well, the old back issues are selling even crazier than normal, but it's not really? conventions. Uh, old back issues are going through the fucking roof these yeah, yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a convention. It's just yeah. all online. Line, yep. There's no reason to go to a con to buy a comic Yeah, why do you have to dig through uh, well, boxes and boxes if you just look right. up the number and well, buy it? Even, right. even for me going to, you know, working at Big Wild this year, it was, you know, I got a little bit of time on the floor Sunday to go around and kind of see if I could fill any holes for my binding projects. And I was just shifting through stuff that was kind of just dumped in a box. And, like, there was no rhyme or reason to it. I'm like, this is going to take me forever. There's already a ton of people, like, sifting through these, you know, either doing the same thing or just, like, ooh, well, comic books. Well, discount bins and stuff. I mean, we'll be, when I go to Comic-Con, or Comic-Con, when <laughs> I go to Big Wow here, I mean, I bring quarter books. I bring 50-cent books. Yeah. That is, that, you know, the one booth I saw that was selling comic books at the convention that actually had a lot of people around it were selling 50-cent comics. Because... That's a thing that will kind of never die. Yeah. But the big booths with all the Silver Age and Bronze Age stuff and a bunch of ke- – I saw the two fucking assholes at the con, and if you're <laughs> listening, fuck off, that had a ton of key books with no prices on it. Uh, That's some bullshit. Uh, That's yeah. some serious bullshit. It wasn't Jay's? No, no, they, I don't think they didn't go down there. But there was a there were two, <laughs> these two booths that like no prices on any of these key issues, and people were like, "How much is this?" And they're like, "A uh, hundred and fifty. And like you can tell, they're just picking big numbers out of their ass, right? Yeah. Well, and, they probably start really high and see what it could get, and yeah. eventually they kind of dwindle down. And that, that shit is shady. But again, that's why I bring up that fucking guy's name, Jay's. Like yeah. I always test him too. It's the same fucking dude. 
with all the fucking booth babes that don't know shit about comics and I do appreciate the visuals <laughs> but I'm there for the comics I'm not there for fucking again if I want to see some boobies and fucking well, while some, you're on the floor you're there for the comic books uh-huh. yes exactly but when I'm outside, then so yeah, for the cosplayers. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> anyways, maybe, maybe that's it. You but Jay, Jay did the same pull, did the same fucking shit. He tried to sell me. This was like two years ago. I was so fucking excited about Blackest Night. I was so excited about Green Lantern, and, and I think he had like a Tales from the Core shit, which is supposedly the first appearance Necron, of Necron. Right? Exactly, yeah. and he had that shit up for hundred fifty dollars. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and then the next day it was seventy five, and then the next day it was fifty. Yeah. And I was like, oh, is this a different comic book? Is it a different yeah. grade? And he's like, oh, you know, just ignores me. Like, yeah. who the fuck am I to ask that question? <laughs> you know, fuck you. You know, whoever the fuck, if all you guys that do that shit, it's going to come back and bat you in your ass. I hope yeah. you fucking go out of business, you bitches. It's so annoying. So the thing with cosplay, look, I don't care if people cosplay. More power to you. If you're, if you're, you want to dress up, cool. If you want to dress up for the attention, cool. If you want to dress up to sell a bunch of, uh, prints of yourself or get a bunch of creepers taking pictures of you do whatever you want get the hell out of the dealer's room though get the hell out of areas where there's a ton of people trying to walk by and you're posing and people are pushing out of the way like i just walk in front of them now i don't give a fuck like, i walk right in the middle of these people trying to take pictures because you shouldn't be there go find a place out in the open off somewhere where you're not going to block traffic well, of thousands think, of people walking. You know, etiquette for that them. That is the, bullshit. What if I, they're actually shopping for shit? They're, oh, no, that's totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Right, I have no problem if you're shopping for shit. If you're standing in the middle, I don't care if it's Long Beach Comic Con or Comic Con. Yeah. If you're standing in the middle of an aisle and you're having people take your pictures... I'm going to push you, you to the floor you and knock you over. You know, you know Can I just follow you with a camera? I, wanna, so, I think that would be really entertaining no, to see. But to so defend so the annoying. cosplayers, though, a lot of them, especially the famous ones, it's difficult for them to say no because they want to touch as many of their fans mm-hmm. and they yeah, spend they most of their him. time. No, they have etiquette. You know, There's yeah, like yeah, an yeah, etiquette jokes. amongst <laughs> them that I know of that I've heard. If they're not at a booth where they're actually paid, they've actually paid to be at a booth you know, to help uh, f- well, for time that they're some there, some of them have booths now. No, and they're some of them have like, booths. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, like or they do the like they, they they or they do split. Like they partner up and s- take turns different days. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard for them to say no because then people fucking bash them and say, "Oh, she was a stuck up bitch," or "Fuck that guy." He was like his his fucking costume was falling apart. Anyways, it's like it's kind of like you're. You're down if you do, you're down if you don't. But I do agree. The, the etiquette of cosplay, I think for the most part, they stay out in the halls or they're outside. Which I'm fine with. You know, when, which during Except like. Except for when they're not. Yeah. yeah. And when they're not, that kind of sucks. But. No, I mean, it, maybe it'd be nice to kind of have like a cosplay alley, you know, where. They do. Well, that's what Fanime did. Well, yeah. They generally do, yeah. yeah. That's what Fanime did. But I mean, little, they, little... I think some of them actually do want to go shop around and I think they maybe should just do it with, uh, out of costume. Yeah, I mean, good point. Good yeah, point. I mean, a buddy of mine, he uh, cosplays as Morpheus and he has his Morpheus Day. He calls it his Morpheus Day where he goes around and I walked around with him for like an hour or so and fuck, man. No. Every fucking minute. Yeah. Can I get a picture? Can I be? I mean, it's Morpheus. It's not even a chick with boobies, right? It's yeah. it's Morpheus. Like, everybody, can I have a picture? Can I? And he told me, he was like, I mean, I see him like the day after and he is like in normal clothes and nobody no one stops talks him. Nobody, yeah, 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 not yeah. one person, right? Nobody yeah. even recognizes yeah. him, right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. So he, 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 he actually specifically gets a day that he goes, oh, man, this is for the people, right? And then he basically pleases all of them. Anybody that wants a picture, he does it, right? Uh-huh. And then all the other days, he's just there normal. Hmm. Yeah, which, which is cool. Yeah, that's the way to do it. So uh, we got other things to talk about here. But yeah, Long Beach Comic Con was cool. Uh, I'm glad I went to it. Uh, I, I'm just, I may just need to start taking some time off from cons. I'm, I'm just burning out on them. We got a couple of random things to talk about here. Uh, man, let's we get to everything today. Flash and Arrow both start pretty soon, as you guys know. Do we know the, what are the dates next week? So, yeah, it's like next Monday and Tuesday. Uh-huh. Yeah, or next, no, Tuesday, uh, next and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, I think it's interesting that they're on at the same time. Well, oh, that's awesome. Like, day, like get home and yeah. well, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, Tuesday yeah. and Wednesday. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, but uh, various people, including uh, Jeff Johns and President of the CW, Mark Pedouts, 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 Pedouts. I can talk. Pedouts. Uh, Mark Pedouts have both said uh, that one, we're going to see possibly other characters spin out of these shows into their own shows. So Woo! Firestorm, maybe. Uh, which is Robbie Amell, which is Stephen Mill's brother, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. It is. Uh, and uh, a lot of the rogues being on, on uh, The Flash. And then also, uh, they're 
they are, are are not ruling out crossovers with the Nightwing slash Titan show on yeah. TNT and Supergirl on CBS. Oh, so best night ever! Whatever night that's going to be on TV, that's going to be the best night ever. So while you know in years past we've occasionally seen this with things like Buffy and uh, Buffy and um, Angel, it's is rare when shows cross over across network. Yeah. So we may see it with these guys. I, I really hope I really hope we do. That'd be uh-huh. really really cool. It's uh, there's not too many times you see that happen. And there's so much other TV show stuff. We had Gotham premiere last week, which yeah. we record literally the time Gotham is airing. So it sucks yeah. that we're always going to be a week back on Gotham. Not much we can do about that. Shield premiered last week. Uh, mm-hmm. Toby, Omar, you guys watched Shield. I just I was out of town, so I have a chance to see it yet. But do you guys want to talk about Shield? Because sure. I've heard yeah. nothing but almost nothing but good things. Yeah, about the I premiere. mean, you know, you guys heard me last season, and I was a big fan of it in the beginning, hoping for their kind of like you know backdrop introduction to stories to go beyond what it took them i mean because obviously they just like fucking took like the first six seven episodes and it was just like to me it was like it was good it was different but then i was like why aren't they using all these other characters like why wasn't that fucking luke cage why why isn't more name dropping happening because there's such an expansive uh you know universe that they can have for like shield hydra and it's not like this is new ground for them because all of that was introduced you know in the movies um if i would have not watched season first season one and i just plugged in right now and watched this first episode i would be like fuck like because you can't unwatch all that shit but this was really great Mm -hmm. uh it was very dark and broody um but it was had some fun moments uh fucking having uh what's absorbing man Oh. Straight up, straight up from the comic book, yeah. dude. He was on point. Mm-hmm. He was on point. I loved. I also like the one that took that chain off that fence thing. Oh man, and, and yeah, that was, I was like that yes, was total fan service. You. But at the same time, they did it in a way where it wasn't so man. like explicit. Well, it was funny because a grandma would watch it go, oh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. and then all the comic book girls, ah, oh, yeah. fuck yeah. And it's not like it was so high tech. The the way they did certain things, it was there was still action, but you can see where they saved money in the budget. Mm -hmm. i know it's tv but you know just i think if you have better writing you work things towards the characters um i really enjoyed that one little uh plot point where um was it what's the 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 two the the corny ass scientists oh fitz and simmons fitz and simmons Mm -hmm. and then it dropped where he fucking was like all crazy and shit he's a little nutty yeah yeah yeah. so that's fucking cool that was so dope i loved how they did it and they did it in a way it was kind of like like focus films kind of shit. Like they just did it by looking under over his shoulder. Yeah, you know, yeah, they did yeah, yeah, a yeah. total different camera angle yeah. perspective. That's the kind of shit that's doesn't cost you anything in TV mm-hmm. and you can totally do it. It just mm-hmm. requires a creative, you know, perspective. Yes. So yeah. Well, I, I've said it to you guys off, off air. Um, if this was the pilot, I would have been ecstatic about it. I mean, yeah. this is what I wanted originally when season one, episode one started. This is what I wanted to see. I want to see Black Ops. Yes. I wanted to see characters who are believable as S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, not a bunch of kids, but yeah. believable like, you know, Cena Warrior Princess is believable as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Dude, yeah, all yeah. those guys, yeah. like the, the, the whole little yeah. Splinter yeah, Cell group. Yeah, dude, I mean, the, the, the British guy, they're believable yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. These guys look like they're actually doing this stuff for a living, right? Not a bunch of kids. So I, I really appreciate that they finally brought in the like the black ops, the like kind of like you know hidden stuff. I'm like it really worked. Um, for once, I didn't want to kill Sky. I actually really thought she was awesome, dude. How can I forget? You're t- as you're talking, yeah. I f- totally forgot the fucking Howling Commandos flashback. Oh, with dude, fucking uh, with my Agent- boy, with my boy Kenny Ch- uh, Kenny Choi, dude. Yes, he was in a short film that me and Mark did like okay. years ago, dude. Uh-huh. I I wrote my part that I did in Serene Rain, yeah. my short film that I won the award for for him. He and he doing, no, but he totally he had a Lee movie at the yeah, time, and no. he he had yeah, he was. But he had scene. like dialogue too, yeah. so that was sick. I thought that it was just great that they used the assets from yeah. Captain America. Yeah, and who knows if that was shot for the TV show. Well, he's Prob- also in, in Sons of Anarchy right now. He has a big part there right yeah. now. Yeah. So, you know, props to Kenny Choi, man. My boy. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Haley Atwell, man. Ooh. I cannot wait for her show to start. Ooh, I'm yes. looking forward to that. Haley. Was it Peggy? Was it Haley. Agent? Agent Agent Carter. Agent Carter. There oh, you my go. God. Haley. Yeah. Thank she you. is so Thank sick. Thank you, God. Yeah. Yes. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so excited about CW, but I'm lo- definitely looking forward to her. 
Yeah, and uh, Dum Dum was awesome too. Dum Dum yeah, was always uh, great. He's awesome. Just a fucking, yeah, just America. Yeah, <laughs> but anyways, um, I I really enjoyed this new opener. I really wish this was the beginning. Uh, yeah. I have a really hard time not remembering season one. Yeah, you know, so they haven't really brought me over the edge yet. But uh-huh. if this is how they open, I would have loved it. And Agent Coulson for me works a lot better when he's more the guy pulling the strings, the yeah. more the guy in the shadows. Yeah, and now he's a director. Opposed, yeah, so that as is opposed perfect. to being the guy like yeah. that's in there the whole time. So sure. I actually really appreciate this new take i'm hoping this is where they're going with it i'm not so sure about ward being down there in the cellar it's a little yeah. nikita a little alias ish yeah. it's been done before but sure. whatever i mean look at yeah. forever they're gonna rip off on the, every show they can right yeah. so you know well you take from the best right yeah so, and that's fine yeah and it's fine as long as they do it somewhat better than they have been doing which it seems like they are so. i i you know you know me dude any comic book shows you know, I really want them to do well. You know, I really, I, you know, I'm hard on them because I love them so much, sure. right? So, I mean, this is a good start. They haven't really won me over because the first season. You know, uh-huh. I, I, I can't erase it out of my memory. But, okay. You know, do you think Z- do you think Zena is going to become Titanium Girl or Titan- Titania? Maybe, maybe. I mean, but she's in there for the long run, isn't she? Yeah, she's she in there for the long run. to be. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't cast Zena Warrior Princess no, to be like fuck a, no. a throwaway character in a movie. Yeah, yeah. So, hopefully, yeah. I'm looking for more Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> Lucy Lawless. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I Man, when they cast her, I was like, man, she needs to be Jennifer Walters. She needs to be She-Hulk. That'd be uh, so great. But yeah, she's not, nope, so it's okay. Not, no, that's, that. fine. that's fine, too. Yeah. So are we going to talk Gotham? Yeah. So everyone wants Gotham. It is a DC yeah. podcast after all, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I'm no, I'm I'm way excited for Shield. I'm hopefully gonna watch it in the next day or two. So no, it was, it was a it was a good it. it was a good um, start, and I'm really really looking forward to what they're gonna do this season. Cool, yeah, cool. And uh, Gotham uh, obviously had some buzz around Comic Con. I know kind of mixed reviews because they did a premiere there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went in hopeful. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there were things that uh, maybe not perfect. Uh, you know, they didn't definitely introduce a lot of characters in the show. They kind of do a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know, maybe a little too much. But, uh, you know, that's to be expected, especially in the pilot. Uh, Enigma, Ian Edward Enigma, I, you know, he had a very little cameo in that first episode. But I was like, I think they nailed this character. Mm-hmm. It's maybe a little forced, but I liked it. Gordon, that was cool. You know, I, I thought most of these guys seem fine. You know, I'm curious to see how they're going to pull off Bullock going forward, whether he kind of redeems himself or stays kind of this crooked cop. But, you know, I'm definitely willing to, to take, you know, to, to wait and see where they take these guys. Uh, Penguin, though, uh, Cobblepot, I thought he was awesome. I thought he stole the show. I wasn't sure how it was felt with the new guy. I thought he looked cool in the trailer, but it's a, it's a different look for Penguin. Clearly... Taller and skinnier, but you know they Hugh Jackman him. Hugh Jackman him, I guess. I don't know, but uh, this guy is creepy and he nails it. Uh, I don't know the actor's name, but I I loved him. I thought he was great. And he must be English since you love him so much. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Yeah, I, I you know it's kind of what's that? What's a, well, how do you describe it? it? It's got that feel like it's still in like the 30s, but then they have like modern technology, so. That sometimes doesn't always work. Like the jail cell, like in the middle of the police precinct seemed a little odd. But it, I think it worked well enough. And, and, and I wonder if we'll see kind of the technology grow with the show as, as it progresses. It, it feels – it doesn't feel completely like a period piece, but then it doesn't feel like super modern CSI style. I think so, that's not on purpose. Yeah, yeah, I think they wanted to keep it a little timeless. Sure, sure. Sort of yeah. like the original uh, Batman animated TV show. Right, which – which, which they did a lot of 60s and 70s thing, but – it was done on purpose, so it's you know it yeah. feels like a little timeless. So yeah. I, I think overall the show, uh, I thought it was a good pilot, not the best I've ever seen, but I enjoyed it. And oh, come on, it's fucking Gotham. Of course I'm going to watch this. Come on. Yeah, I mean for me, I I enjoyed it. I liked, you know, I I liked the guy who played Gordon, the guy who played uh, Bullock, uh, Penguin. Yeah, like you said, amazing. Uh, Riddler. Uh, that whole scene, I was just like laughing. And especially when it was a bit like, over the top, but I, well, I thought it was fun. Gordon cuts him off, and he's all like, "Huh?" It was, it was, it was great. Um, again, you know, good pilot, fair. You know, yes, I think there was a lot of stuff they kind of threw in there, but again, it's it's a pilot. You're kind of supposed to grab as much attention as you can, um, but they definitely left it where there can be. There's they definitely left it where there can be a lot of character development um, with these characters over time. So, 
But yeah, for I mean, I'm excited to see you know where we go with this. I thought it was hilarious that Selena Kyle was in it, but didn't say a word. Yeah, I was fine like, with that. Yeah, so. Again, there were so many characters in the first episode. It, you know, well, she didn't have to say anything. Though. Everyone kind of got I know, there. But- Everyone kind of got their one scene, or little you you learn a little bit about these characters, and then you know as we go on, we'll find out. This Montoya is in movie. was in there. Yeah, that was awesome. That actually, I mean, since we're talking spoilers about this, the the Montoya um, and what's uh, and Barbara? Uh, it's not she's not Gordon yet. No, it's a uh, his first wife. Yeah, yeah Barbara Keen. Uh, uh, Kane. Keen. Keen. Yeah, their their little hinted at love affair was. Definitely caught me off guard. That, that was a that was a good twist. So mm-hmm. I'm very curious to see where they're going to go with that. Yeah, and I, I think with, sh- the show just needs to get what its voice is, like where it's going to come from. You know, yeah. is it is it going to you know? Because I mean, Smallville for a long time had the monster of the week kind of feel, and then well, it- I f- I feel like we're going to get one major villain per season. I think they're setting Penguin mm-hmm. up this first season. I, I mean, I kind I mean, we'll get background and bits and pieces of other characters. But I, I kind of get a feeling that's where we're going. This season, to me, feels like it's going to be the setup of Penguin taking uh, power over from... Okay, first from, of all... From Fish? From Fish Mooney, which going into this, I was like, man, that is the stupidest fucking name. She was awesome. Yeah, she was. I thought she was super cool. I thought it was like, okay, I totally buy this. It was, it was um, Jada Pinkett Smith. I, thought, I, was, I didn't know what to think of that. I, it was a stupid name. I was like, that just sounds goofy. But I thought she actually worked out really well, and I liked the character. I just don't think she's going to be around for very long. I think that's why they were able to cast a fairly larger name on that role, because Penguin will take her out by the end of the season. That seems to be the setup, at least. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I was here Wednesday, and I was talking with Brian and Marshall about that, and they're like, oh, Penguin? Fish? Ha <laughs> ha? Get it? Dead? Dead Jada Pinkett? I'm like, yeah. Jada Pinkett, for me, is kind of like Hale Holly Berry. Like, she's just kind of annoying, and she just needs to die. <laughs> So, <laughs> fuck that bitch. She's like, seriously, like, she like totally cheated on like the coolest guy in the whole wide world with that f- nasty ass skeezer Latin dude. What's his name? Uh, uh, J Lo's uh, ex husband. Uh, Anthony. Yeah, Anthony. Anthony. I don't even know. Who, yeah, I don't know who knows? We, it's not. It's not. So singer dude. It's not worth it. I I know the name of like comic Mark, artists and comic Mark writers. Anthony? Yeah, there you go. Oh, Mark Anthony. oh yeah, yeah I was okay. First name yeah, Anthony. what I was saying is, I know the name of creators, not some just fucking skeezer ass Latin singers. Fuck those guys. Um, for Fox, for what they did, I was entertained. I mean, like, I really, you know, I hold Gotham with high regard. Obviously, sixty percent of my comics, seventy five percent of my comics is all Gotham related. I love Gotham. I'm totally in fucking invested. Um, but, you know, I feel like, and this is something that I was talking about with Brian, and this is the idea he brought up. He's like, man, can you imagine if Gotham was on FX? Oh. God damn. Oh. Like, we had somewhat more like the shield. Oh, oh. Oh, and, 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 and you just want it to be better. You oh. want it to have more reigns of being darker. Because for me, I really feel like, and I know a few of you feel the same way. We've seen Gotham done so many fucking times. Yes. And it's just like, why do we have to see the fucking pearls break in the beginning? Why do we have to see the fucking Bruce Lee... Wayne's fucking parents die every fucking time. You know what? It's but known it's not already. a it's not a movie, right? It's a TV show, so sure. it's thirty seconds once of a, of, of what will probably be five or seven years, right? I mean, to me, you have to start. There. Put your balls I'm, I'm on the wall. Put your balls on the wall. Throw the fucking ga- the gamut down and do be something different. Do something different. I mean, and and some of the elements of the show I think were, um, but I just felt like. Because I do like the whole uh, relation showing uh, a young Selena Kyle possibly having this kind of mentorship role with Bruce and helping him out of the dark or showing him into the dark. That can be kind of cool. Um, but it's Fox. So I like it. I like it more than anything on CW because CW is fucking bubblegum, fucking pop music shit. And that's just the way it is. Um, and, I pre- and I appreciate for what it is because that's what it is. They can't do anything different from their fucking script. I want I want to like Flash, but it's on the CW. How about so. Dawson's Creek, man? Dawson's you got, Creek, you gotta yeah. like Dawson's Creek. Yeah, I mean, I liked it because <laughs> of the memories of not watching Dawson's girls? Creek, but you know, like how about, how about uh, you know, hanging uh, out with girls on their bed, you know, uh, watching about, Dawson's uh, Creek. What was on a uh, fuck? I don't remember now. 
uh, um, the Vampire Show. Are you gonna watch Flash? I mean, are you at least gonna go through the pilot? Or of course, I have them all recorded episodes? already. I have them all like on DVR, and I'm gonna watch it because again, I'm a fucking comics book guy. So I'm gonna watch it. So you haven't watched what, any you, you didn't, you didn't really or... follow Aaron's season. No, I watched like a bunch of them, and it's just like for me, I, I'm a big Deathstroke fan. I'm like, why the fuck did they waste Deathstroke on fucking Arrow? God damn it! Because we're gonna get Titans <sighs> on TNT or TBS, whatever the hell is gonna be. Could you see it's him gonna coming be Nightwing. Back? It's gonna be Nightwing related Dude. and. Dude, if he comes back on freaking uh, oh, Titans just, instead of Arrow, that would be kind of cool too. Oh man, it's just like I he just was awesome. Uh, on Arrow. I like him. I like him. Uh, he was. I like him. You're missing. You are missing out. No, I, I didn't miss out on anything. I watched. I seen all the so what, stroke. So what's your take? Well, I'm gonna echo Omar here a little bit. Um, I wish we could have seen a, a cable version of this instead of a network version. Um, to me, I'm I'm kind of in this weird uh, half and halfway, right? I mean. I would have liked either seeing a young Bruce Wayne show as in a young Bruce Wayne growing up because watching this uh, pilot, it still, it still seemed to me that Bruce is the most interesting character there. I mean, the whole time I was like, you know, I don't really want to see Gordon. I want to see Bruce. I want to see what happens to him. So there's one take. On the other side of this coin, I would have liked to seeing a Gotham Central show, like just a... a you know, Batman is around, this is what we do, and that kind of show. This is kind of like, for me, it's in between. So, you know, again, I went in open arms to watch it. Uh, I, I really liked that Catwoman was, uh, you know, uh, um, what's it called? She was, uh, yeah, she saw it, she saw the murder. I thought that was kind of weird. I don't like that everything is entwined. I think Hollywood likes to put everything together. Everything is, like, meant to be, and everything is connected. That, that, that's what the mass is like, is they like mm-hmm. everything yeah, tied up. I, I agree, though. Bow. I agree. Yeah, so I, I, I really didn't need that. And I know they, they hammer all these cameos in for, for the pilot because they really wanted a, the start of a bang. So I appreciate them trying. On the other hand, I could have done these cameos through the seasons. I'd probably be more fun. Uh you know, that's right. I, I thought Gordon was a little too clean cut. Maybe it's just the story how he goes kind of down a little bit and comes back up. Um, I didn't really like the guy, but, you know, I'll, I'll continue watching the show. It's kind of sick, though, when he fucking uh, appeared to take out Penguin, right? Like That that was cool. See, I like that scene. Uh, I actually like Bullock, and I think over time we'll see that he has got a good heart. Fish Mooney, Fish Mooney was awesome. Um, I like what I hear what they're going to do with Joker, supposedly. So supposedly every other episode, every episode or so, there's going to be a character that has a characteristic of the Joker. So at yeah, this one we had like the com- comedian, right? Yeah, a so, lot of people were like, oh, the Joker, the Joker. And I'm like... Yeah, no. Yeah, it's not that easy. Wait. It's not. Yeah, that easy. I think they're slowly gonna build this character. Yeah, out. the joke. I mean, no, the Joker the is He's the, the money. is the the Yang to the Batman. Batman's Yang. Well, yeah, you let's know, like, be honest. There should not be a Joker in this show, right? I mean, the Joker should never be around before Batman's around. Yeah, yeah. You know, Penguin being part. You know, Penguin obviously didn't just become Penguin overnight. I mean, yeah. there was a build up here. Well, yeah. you can have. <clears throat> Like a young Harvey Dent, he's not. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't be DA. The cops can kind of be doing their own thing, and that's fine. But most of the villains shouldn't really be full blown villains until Batman's mm-hmm. around. So I'm, well, I'm I know, curious how they're gonna. I know that the previews come that. out or the the trailers come out for the season. I guess they're premiered, and I guess Zaz is featured in it. Well, it, I I read about the second like early Zaz, like it's pre well, Zaz. They use everywhere. <laughs> they use yeah. them everywhere. They can. And Zaz as well. But yeah. when Batman first runs into Zaz, he's already got a ton of cuts. Yeah. Sure, so sure. if he wants to be this sort of serial killer, yeah. starts at the first two cuts, right? Yeah. Then yeah, totally understandable. I think yeah. there are characters where this will work, but. I don't want to see Two Face in the show. I don't want to see Joker in the show. I wouldn't mind seeing Raza Ghoul watching Gun- Raza Ghoul. Wayne totally fine. <laughs> League of Assassins, totally yeah. fine. There are there are characters, you know, even like Killer Croc, or you know, there are definitely characters that can get well, away with it. Like um, you know, seeing Killer Croc early on would be fine, or um, Clayface. Yeah, sure. Right, like sure. you 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 have plenty of characters that can you can kind of see where they're coming from, like they're they're. Kind of Waylon was it Waylon Jones and yeah they could um, they could have an episode where previous where, versions, yeah, yeah where something with like you know Clayface where he's an actor in in the movie and stuff like that and there's some crime that goes on or whatever and and he's a yeah. you know yeah yeah I mean if you know again sorry it's not my turn right now I'm jump back in huh? again yeah, right. if it was on FX we'd probably see you know Barbara you know the door the doorbell rings and then Montoya you know okay he's gonna question. go into titties Montoya and the question shut I'm the just, fuck up cut this him is, off shut because up. he's living a fantasy right now you no know, Montoya comes in says hey we need to talk this and that and then 
You know, they start to undress and kiss. Side it feels boob. so. It feels so good. It feels so natural. And then you know, Sing and then Gordon now. comes in, and then Gordon comes in, and you know, you and then of course Christmas, Christmas Allen, Spectre, he runs upstairs to try to find his partner, Spectre? and then it's just you like boom. Well, actually, ba-boom. it was cool that Christmas Allen was in. Right, that was rant. I totally unexpected. I had no idea him and um, uh, Montoya were in the show. So, mm. so there you go. Well, anyways. I'm I'm indifferent on the show. I I liked it pilot. I I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was bad. There's there's people I know that that think it was completely horrible. There's some cheesy lines, whatever. Some some of the things were forced. I think some of the stuff were done nicely. I really really like the end scene with uh, uh Gordon and Bruce. Mm-hmm. Like like Gordon giving him giving Bruce the choice. He goes, "Listen, I know this is what's going on. This is what I want to do, but it's in your hands, right? Yeah. And Bruce, first of all, saying that he's happy that the dude is still alive. I was like, that's genius because that's so Bruce Wayne right there, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then Gordon giving him the choice. I thought that was very, very nicely done. That was very cool. You make me remember the that whole like scene when you were talking about it yeah. and how Alfred like is such a fucking like militant hard ass, which <laughs> right, I like yeah. that version of Alfred because that's like straight up from like um, Beware the Bat. Like, yeah. And... Then well, he's like, oh. It's from Earth 1. It's from the uh, Batman Earth, Earth 1, one yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, that's so, it. Yeah, no, no, well, really quick, really quick, really quick, really yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he's like, uh, Alfred's all, hey, wait a minute. He's all, oh, Alfred, shut the fuck up. Like, he's like, STFU, <laughs> Alfred. Like, he's like, totally comes through like all Bruce Wayne voice as a little boy. Yeah, that was kind of While funny. I didn't hate Alfred, I think, his, weird I, I think his accent's off. Yeah. yeah. That's not the Alfred accent. I, I don't, a lot of accents that are off. I mean, what about Gordon? Gordon's like Scottish. Well, but he sounded fine to me. I don't know, Alfred. Uh, Alfred, I think was the weakest character for me in, in that sense. Well, that Alfred, I actually it, think Gordon was kind of weak to me. I'm sorry, but you know, like I said, fine. I'm rooting for the show and I hope that this yeah. thing turns around. Yeah, it's a lot of shit. Again, it's a pilot. Hopefully, the other shows are more focused. Yeah, I mean, the no. pilot always has a lot of things riding on it. So, uh, Omar. Hey, we're going to do a bit of a short um, book club pick here because That's fine. I don't think I think only you and Brock had a chance to read them. Yeah. Um, I have I have not. I was sick and out. That's fine. And I, I mean, but, but you I, have no. read it before, oh, I've read and you can X talk about it. To, oh, yeah, I mean, I can talk about. I'll jump one. right into it. And um, what I'm going to say is Barry Windsor Smith. For those of you new school cats, well, hipsters, hold on. hold on. Okay, Weapon X. We're talking about Omar's book club pick for this month, which okay. was Weapon X. Okay, it is Barry Windsor Smith written and drawn uh, by yeah. Barry Windsor yeah. Smith. Yeah, he wrote and drew it. Yeah, yeah, he, and he even lettered some parts. I, I believe he did fucking everything. This was a twelve issue. "Quote unquote twelve issue short series in um, Marvel um, uh, Marvel Comics presents mm-hmm. back in nineteen ninety one that this was sort of his first time we got the Weapon X part of Wolverine's backstory like really fleshed out and told yeah, the, Hit, the numbers are on the back yeah it's, it's um, uh, like, yeah seventy two to eighty four yeah, yeah. seventy two to eighty four yeah. now so, when these came out this was the shit this was like the big wolverine book when this came out i mean this this was a huge story this, this is like out. the biggest wolverine book after the original miniseries right, right, right? right because you have a creator that kind of found his own like yeah. everyone kind of jocked his shit back in the days in like this the 80s during conan but when he was doing some work with he did some really weird shit i think was it machine man yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he did uh, some other books. Well, Barry Windsor Smith stuff is just—he's got a—it's a, not the same as like George Perez level of detail, but he has just a—he has a there's a lot of detail. In yeah, stuff. and he there's has a lot he, of line work. He really does emotion well, and he does the right like those like moments where you you see someone when they're saying some words, uh, and this was his first writing actual big writing gig, right? Probably. Is, I, I mean, he's he's done some some of his own work prior yeah. to this, but but this is what really sold Shooter on saying, you know what? When I fucking start my own company because I'm tired of Marvel and fucking open up Valiant, this guy is going to be the ones that the guy that's like the creative director. He's going to be the Jeff Johns of Valiant, and, and that's he, what he, he became. Over and he did like a lot of the cover art for yeah. Valiant and yeah. it, some interior too. Oh so. yeah, totally. You know, he killed Solar. Yeah, and, Solar was and yeah, uh, sure. Archer and Armstrong. Yeah. Um, anyways, so like Barry Windsor Smith for me, he's one of those artists that totally brings me back to my childhood. Um, Great covers too. All the comic, all the, and I brought these in just so we can all look at them again. All the covers are like iconic. If you compare them to like all of the the covers that we saw from say Frank Miller, it's on that level. Uh, oh, this absolutely. is the this is the first time we see Wolverine in a book, and it's not his. How many issues Weapon X? It's not his story. It's, I think it's 12, it 12, issues. 12 issues. Is that 12 issues in that trade? Well, yes. it's 12, 12 
thirds but, of a comic. Well, it's like one third or one yeah. fourth of yeah. a comic because uh, Marvel Comics Presents was oh, an anthology. Uh, okay, yeah, and there was right. only like maybe even eight, nine pages okay, for yeah, each I book. Got you. Okay, cool. But um, it was so dope because you start the story like a basic Wolverine book, okay? This is how number 72 opens up. Wolverine's in a bar drinking beer. Okay, it fuck, man. How many times have we seen this? Okay, and then he's talking about things. He's talking about his story. And, you know, like, there's been so many great Wolverine stories, but a Wolverine story that his origin is told through these fucking researchers, professors, and what is the Weapon X program? They called it Project X because Project X, I reread it in the, and wanted to kind of, like, again, refresh myself with this because I haven't read this again for maybe, like, five years. But uh, it was so great. Again, this the, there's a certain type of storytelling uh, mechanic where a character is not... You see him in all the different panels, but he doesn't say anything. And it's pretty much him flashing back and you're reliving him going through the adamantium process and going through the lab. And them talking about him like, oh, he's this person, he's this animal. And like uh, you see how like Wolverine's resolve is not just so much his mind, which is obviously it's, it was shown and developed during the seventies with Claremont and Byrne, but, uh, his, his body, just how different he is. I love the part where the professor's like, Oh my God, this guy can be an immortal. I love it when origins. Okay. The original, if you guys didn't hear, uh, was it three, three episodes again or two episodes again, two, three episodes, I think, or four episodes. When I picked this pick, I made this pick because of death of Wolverine. And also because of Origin 2. Wolverine is such an incredible character, but I hate it when people fuck up an origin story. Mm-hmm. An origin story, you don't need to fucking give all the details. You don't need to call him James Howlett. Just give a story that isn't compelling. Give a story that shows light of a character that we haven't seen in a different way. Well, and this, this opened up as many questions as it answered, too, when this came up. Because, again, there's so much previous stuff to mm-hmm. it that we didn't know. You know, when Wampa Next came out, and you know, reading through it, it is one part of a story, but you are left still not actually really knowing anything. You just find out the sliver of his life. Yeah, and the way you 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 say that, it's awesome because it's totally uh, analogous with how the story is told. Because you don't know really; it's kind of mind fucks you. You don't know if it's really virtual reality or if things have really happened because the way they ended, it says like, oh, all these people that they show die throughout the book, they're actually alive and we just see him like escape. So um, I'll keep it kind of short, but I give it uh, I give it eight out of 10 Omars. I mean, this is 91, but Barry Winter Smith, I mean, he's just, he's a fucking living legend. I love him. He's a shit. Thank you. BWS. Nabrak, you, you read through this? Yeah, I read it. Have read, you read it before? Or? I read it, um, I think I read it a few years ago uh, when I got back in when I came back to the shop and started getting back into comics, because um, I, I had never read it before, I, I I might have had one or two issues of the Marvel Comics Presents that I randomly picked up um, when I was younger. But uh, um, I think like like the artwork is amazing, you know, especially for the time and what's portrayed in it. Um, rereading it though, and I mean co- the the kind of the perspective that you're getting from a third party while this is going on to um, Logan it, it is enjoyable, but I, I found it very difficult. And, and this is an example. This is a perfect example of new comic book readers will find this exceedingly difficult to read because the bubble, the, the thought bubbles and the dialogue don't necessarily flow in the like easiest way. Like you'll cross panels and then have to go down here. And there's very kind of, it's hard kind of to follow, whereas most of the time when we read comic books, it's kind of this easy flow of like where to go with dialogue. Um, and I mean, I consider myself a seasoned comic book reader, and I had difficulty at times reading through it. And that, that could have just been because you know, I mean, it's Windsor Smith's earlier attempts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you said, he lettered some of it and all that well, stuff. Well, this is his first time, I think, too, also plotting books yeah. completely. Because like, I think, uh, I, I want to say his name. This guy is like, a god uh, in comic artist, but he he was more of a finisher, I yeah. think, uh, especially during Conan. So, um, but I mean, it's it's enjoyable for the aspect of it. It gives us kind of a, a good a good base to see, you know, what happened. I mean, because this isn't this is the animantium origin story, right? This is this is the origin of his animantium skeleton and him getting the animantium. Um, you know, 
flipping through it when he's having that sequence where he's kind of the darkness is coming and all these spikes are sticking out of him. Uh, you know, I, I literally like remember, um, what was it Fatal? Uh, what's the one where the A Man name gets yanked out of him? Fatal Attractions. Fatal Attractions. And I just remember, like, the kind of similar kind of spikiness Yeah, the to, hologram cover. Yeah, kind of <laughs> everything coming out. And, and so, um, you know, uh, for me, I, 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 it's a solid it's a solid book. Um, does it stand up as kind of... It's a very... It's a 90s book. Like, yeah. it reads very, very 90s. So it, it could be a little difficult for some people. But the artwork is amazing. Um, you know, just the detail... Um, He's naked throughout most of the book anyway, and it's just it's kind of funny at, at points to just say, well, how did he cover up this time, or how did he cover up this time? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. there was one the distinct point where the, he had like a, a ball of snow covering his groin, yeah. and I'm like, man, his pecker must be really small. I mean, I understand it's cold outside, but this is a really small, tiny thing covering up that area. Or there's also a time when he, the researcher, he doesn't kill her, and she's like, pretty much about to give him a bj yeah yeah like, <laughs> so it's, it's her head covering yeah uh, but you know for the most part I, I, overall i think i i mean i would give this um seven out of ten omars um the the little backup in at least in the trade that i read they included the uh this i love that they use this this is the this is the the flashback the culinary yeah the flashback artwork i think it's like number 76 maybe uh, no, what it is is they uh, they open the, they, in two thousand and one because I have it in here. In two thousand and one, he returned uh, Barry Smith or Windsor Smith returned to draw a flashback sequence for Wolverine one sixty six and his cover to one sixty seven, okay. and that's kind of where I think yeah, this one right here that's the issue. I think that's that's like the cover or something. That's a but, more detailed version of it. Though. Yeah, I think because they I think they had something in here like that. Um, but yeah, no, there, there is, there's, like there's a panel that's like that, but this is a, 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 a more detailed one, newer one. So, yeah. I mean, that, that to me, like, that, that, that look and that cover is as big as that fucking when he escapes from the uh, Hellfire Club. Mm-hmm. And he has all those. Like, well, it's, pretty... it's, it's the pileup, right? It's like he's either dealing with a lot of, you know, military guys with guns, he's dealing with a bunch of ninjas, or hell, he's dealing with a bunch of guys that are, you know, from the Weapon X. Um, series that they had a few years ago that was really really bad. Yeah, um, and it was a bunch of guys with like green like claws or whatever. Yeah. But um, no, I mean it's it's very in depth. It, part of me was almost as if I needed to be tripping acid at some points reading this because it's it gets a little. Well, I mean, a lot of it too. You don't know. Again, like I said, it's yeah. like, is it in his head? Is this shit just VR, virtual reality? Oh, well, that's why I said it. You know, it brings up almost as many questions as it answers yeah. because it you you don't actually know. Well, I love what's the the Superman reference in there. Yeah, right. yeah, that was funny because yeah. you can't do that shit anymore. Oh, Barry Wynn Smith, British. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, for me, this was one of the big comics coming out when I was first kind of getting into comics. You know, roughly around the same time. Uh, so, uh, you know, this was everywhere, and it was such a big deal when it came out. So, you know, I, I grabbed these and I read them, and I love the anthology stuff too. So, uh, I'm super happy to read these when it came out. I haven't read this in years, so I really need to go read it. Firestar, um, Firestar is in this. There's like three stories of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I also have them again <laughs> still because of all my new warrior appearances. Oh, of so, course. yeah, yeah. They had a bunch of new warrior appearances. Marvel Comics presents. But, Towards the later half of it. Yeah, well, even, even early stuff. There was a Speedball one, and Fire, Firestar was in a bunch of the early ones. But, you know, I would argue, you know, one of the biggest takeaways from this book outside the, the I mean, outside of the plot, clearly, because it's such an important part of Wolverine's story, <clears throat> you have the yellow costume, you have the brown costume, and then you have naked Wolverine with that thing on his head and all the wires. Yeah, oh, that, the that, is, yeah. that is easily the third most I have popular that action figure. Yeah, that is easily the third most famous Wolverine like costume ever to me. I mean, because it's just such an iconic image of him just naked with that thing on his head. It, you know, it looks the, like the it, Doc like, Brown. It looks like in Ghostbusters visor. when they put the the thing on uh, on on his head to you know, read his yeah. brain and everything like that. With all these fucking just wires going everywhere and all of his body and everything. I mean, to me, it, it is. It is such an iconic image. It's just such a great costume. So that's my, that's always going to be my takeaway from that series. So yeah, I actually I need to reread this. It's been way too long. I got to reread the original Wolverine miniseries too. I haven't read that in years. Yeah, I read it a few years ago again when I got back into comics, but uh, I haven't read anything since. 
So uh, Bryce should be next. Hopefully, he's on next week. How many? How many Omar's? Picks. How many Omar's? Uh, I mean, I haven't already. Give it how many? Give it nineties. You nineties. You gives I mean, it how many? I'll definitely give it eight you. out of ten, just because of my memory of this book, and it's still. You know, when people give a short list of top three Wolverine stories, this is always, oh, always, there. always yeah. on the list. Yeah. Always two or three, generally. So it's classic. I mean, I think the Wolverine, the the miniseries, will. That's kind of the definitive Wolverine book, I think, for most people. But this is going to be two or three for almost everyone else. So, yeah, yeah. definitely check it out if you haven't read it. Uh, we don't have too much time, but I do have one question I want to read here because it's a topic I wanted to talk about briefly. Because it's from Cross X Hunter. Because you love writing all, well, writing all of this. Well, <laughs> well, Cross X Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> no, fuck Kenzo. No more, no more no, questions Mitchell. for Kenzo. I'm kidding. Cr- Cross X Hunter wanted to say just to piss off a liquid. Did Toby uh, actually get to see the core book four trailer? Get yes. hype, son. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, what, what, the biggest part about the trailer is Cora saying tough at the very end. I'll just leave it right there. I'll take your word for it. Are you hype? I'm very hyped, actually. Okay, good. Uh, well, yeah, I'm very hyped. I mean, the minute Cora is going to be on, I'm hyped. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like like I said, you know, it doesn't have to be much. I mean, you know, someone triggers it. I'm going to tell tell everybody all about how awesome Avatar and Cora is. Yeah, you were so, yelling at me earlier yeah, on, yeah, online. Yeah, you're the worst person in the <laughs> human <laughs> planet that still Avatar. hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, But, uh, no, I mean, it's it's one of my all-time favorite shows at this point. There's no doubt about it, yeah. both, uh, both of these. And seeing uh, this is like a three-year-later take, and I thought the trailer was cool. A lot of people in different places. Yeah. And just the thought of uh, Tough from the original series to be back is very, very, very cool. So I'm, cool. I'm very looking forward to it. Cool. Well, right, so your question. We got some good questions here this week, but I only got time for one. Uh, this is from Stefano. Stefano. He says, what are your hopes for Wait, the implications? This is, this is the Stefano? Yes. You have a box coming, by the way. What are your hopes for the impl- implications of Superman Doomed number two's ending? Ooh. So, oh, those, here we go. My my universe is back. Did any so we didn't talk about this earlier, but I definitely definitely wanted to mention this. I also asked about the ending of Superman Doomed number two at the retailer uh, and convention. And first of all, did it, it just laugh like, at you? Well, first of all, it felt like every other retailer was like, "What?" <laughs> but obviously, because no fucking these guys never actually read comic books. Yeah, be good for you, Ryan. We're, we're, can yeah. we just all get, can we give Ryan a, a yeah. golf clap <laughs> for actually reading comics again? <laughs> Okay, so, no, so I came in on Tuesday, <laughs> and he made it a point to shove Superman Doomed yeah. in my face, and he said, flip through it. I'm like, all the way? He's like, eh, technically just the end. Um, and I had to like plow through it last Tuesday. So Superman Doom number two, as well as the Booster Gold. Um, I, haven't end, re- I haven't read it yet. Features and one shot. Uh, they are both, I don't know why this isn't being talked about as like, is it's it, all over CBR. It's all over like everywhere. I saw like one article about it, but the end of Superman Doom number two for people that haven't read it. I mean, big spoiler here in case you haven't read it. Is Brainiac basically staring into the bleed and seeing the original DC pre New Fifty Two universe Superman in his red underwear and everything? Um, it, it's not clear if it's all like pre New Fifty Two stuff because there's a, f- a shot of Flashpoint. There's a shot of just like the the new Teen Titans. Again, they're very different by the time the new Fifty Two started. So uh, they have like Earth Four. They have like Shazam. They have like these very classic takes on all these characters. They have Blue Beetle coming down, you know, and yeah. kind of his first appearance coming down from the thing. So uh, there was a there was a handful of other uh, characters that appeared in this first in this last page too. So it kind of reminded me a little of like Infinite Crisis when they're like punching the walls of reality. It's all kind of sort of shattered. So there's that, and then Booster Gold is straight up traveling between the Commandy, you know, Jack Kirby universe. So I don't know if this is maybe just a take on what's going on a multiverse, a multiversity. I don't. I mean, but that big Superman in the red underwear standing there on that first page—that is classic mm-hmm. Superman. So they're doing something with these books. Uh, it says to be continued in Future's End. So this week's Future's End is going to apparently directly tie into this because it's one of them even said I think it was issue twenty two or twenty three, whatever this week's issue is twenty one maybe or twenty must be twenty two. Twenty two. So something, something big. Uh, and when I asked them at the retailer meeting, uh, Bob Wayne, who is the uh, just about to retire uh, DC v- head of sales and, and kind of retailer rep, laughed and. They had the book there. It was funny. They had one comic book, and it was Superman Doom number two. 
and they were all looking at it. And and he was like, well, thank you for reading the comic, and <laughs> we'll talk to you guys about this sometime in the future. Oh. And that was his answer. So I mean, what else? Of, of course, of course. But I had said, you know, when might we hear about more about what happens at the end of Superman Doom number two? And this, he just started laughing. This is just <laughs> like when we were at fucking the last WonderCon for Jeff John's panel, and you went up to Jeff, and you're like, oh, he was like, oh, Ryan, like <laughs> only person's name he knew, fucking out of all the people asking questions, and you had to ask that fucking question about First Lantern, and then you're like, he's like, oh, Ryan, oh, Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, well, it took to the end of his run, but we got him, so, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, can we say what we hope for to happen? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really hope that they just can grab from the the big ideas of all the past, make it new, and New 52 is not something that they need to have as a label. It was, it's something that happened, and it's a part of the, the bleed, because it happened. Um, and hopefully, you know... They just take from shit. Like I, I, I'm really, really crossing my fingers and my toes that I can have a blue and gold kind of like first kind of like meeting in the new 52 or whatever it's going to be called. World's End now. I don't know. Um, so that I'm look really looking forward to that if that happens because uh, they're a fucking awesome team and it's been a long time since we've seen Ted Cord besides those Booster Gold books that happened like three years ago. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm allowed to say about... I, I wasn't told I couldn't say anything. So at the retailer meeting for World's End number one, the very first page is that classic shot of the multiple Earths kind of in that spiral pose, right? Just just kind of coming down from the top, and you kind of see them coming around like that. So clearly, there's, you know, World's End may be more than Earth 2. It it, it may be, you know, the lead into this big multiverse Mm -hmm. kind of crisis on Infinite Earth's 30th anniversary that we've heard rumors about I'm also for quite really some time. worried because they could just be closing out it was 352 for good that's and that's the world that's gonna die Emily it could be it yeah. could be yeah but at least we have one more month of Nightwing with his uh with his collar <laughs> you know his disco collar I mean we you know that that book was printed well, so I mean the thing is is DC's DC's had such a I mean they did the line wine thing well, granted a couple titles didn't really change much but you know they did the line wine thing and I mean for the most part I think it was part success and part failure. Um, but again, it's it's now like something where we don't necessarily need, you know, like you said earlier, a, a one continuity for everything. I mean, you know, we might get a, you know, an Oracle book, uh, you know, where we have Oracle. It's Barbara Gordon as Oracle and stuff's going on with Batman and all this stuff, but it's stories of her as Oracle, you know, kind of. It's a different universe. It's a different Earth that we're looking at. Because, well, I mean, there's... there's the, the problem with something like that is that, I mean, I think the books do need to connect because they're a connected universe. You can have the books exist. I, I don't think you can have two, quote-unquote, in-continuity comics where the characters are so very different. So, yeah. like, they well, have well, Barbara... No, no Marvel and Ultimate Marvel books? They have Barbara <laughs> as... Well, no, that's perfectly fine, right? But not in the same one. They have Barbara as Oracle in the first issue of the uh, Wonder Woman um, sensational comic, the Gail Simone one, right? So, I mean, this is going back to that version. You have them in the uh, in the was it the Legend of the Dark Knight or the Superman? Uh, you know, it's kind of the the anthology stuff where they are kind of just whatever universe, right? Yeah. Sure, but. You know, I I I pretty much expect we're going to get some sort of condensed ending of the new fifty two. You know, as a as a as a brand, kind of a, a best of all this stuff post post some whatever mm. big crossover is. So, okay, my vote for best of that's not Batman is uh, Green Arrow. Well, right. I mean, I think cert- well, we already they're already off. So the Green yeah, Arrow is going on. over to the creators of Arrow are going to be writing Green Arrow. Mm. So, be curious to see what they do with it. Is it but- going to be the same art? No. Oh no 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 no. He's um, hmm, Andre Sorrentino is going to Marvel. Sucks. Who DC, else is going to Marvel fans? too? Soul. Charles yeah, Charles Soul. Charles Soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. man, it's he's like, become like my favorite things. writer, dude. Like Green Arrow. Fuck, that <laughs> sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. Yep. No, I mean, I again, it. I, I think DC. From what you said of the meeting, I mean, I think they they take input at least from retailer perspective and, and coming because you you're on the front lines. Well, they. I mean, they've got the thing that they're doing, and, and you know, had the new 52 been a crazy wild success, and 
never dipped in sales and only went up and 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 Hawk and Dove was selling you know 250,000 copies <laughs> then I'm sure they would keep this boat riding forever yeah. but where they are now they realize hey you know what well, we got to do something so you know big event comes up that's the way these things work it's all good all right we're going to go ahead and wrap up uh thank you everyone that has been on this podcast mm-hmm. uh we will have a new episode next week as with your book always. club selection with, yeah hopefully um Bryce is here next week so we can talk about that but for right now, you can go to geekbox.net or comicsconspiracy.biz and view or view, listen to this episode and all our previous episodes. Forums.geekbox.net and the Geekbox Facebook group. Just go search for that. And you can uh, talk to us on all, on all those different places. Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. That is where you can go buy your digital comics. We get a nice cut every time you do it. So go on there and buy some stuff. They just had like a free, they gave away like 54 five number one issues i think over over last week uh so yeah they great. had a really great image sale last week yeah yeah they had a bunch of stuff Skybound. so yeah a lot of chances to pick up some good books conspiratorbrock.com that is brock's blog uh comics into kind.com that is omar's blog go visit those as well as the infinite long box podcast and the wanderers in fourth dimension podcast those are charlie's two other podcasts when he's not here and i don't know if he's doing those he's not feeling good he's been, he was having that same throat crap that i had last week so hopefully he's feeling better uh ryan higgins ryan on twitter brock is brock sager comics into kind that is omar Larson Bryce is Bryce Larson. Toby's, well, Toby's Toby XI, but apparently he's not Toby XI because someone hacked his account. So <laughs> Toby will get a new Twitter account or retake Toby XI. But join him in the meantime. Maybe you'll get some porn spam. I don't know what. Some male uh, porn spam? In- insanity in chaos. That is Charlie's Twitter account. Don't forget to listen to Geekbox, the comedy button, Good Job Brain, and the All Talk podcast. Those are all podcasts done by glorious other people that, um, that are on this little Geekbox podcast network that we record. So go do that. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next week.